Hey guys, uh, today we will talk about the facial nerve and its disorders. So it will be a two part video. In this part, we will talk about, okay, in this video we will talk about the relevant anatomy of the facial nerve. Um, that is the course of the facial nerve, the branches of facial nerve. Okay, we also talk about the topo diagnostic tests and the prognostic tests that we do that we do in the facial nerve disorders. Okay, and in the next video we will talk about the facial nerve palsies, facial um, facial nerve disorders, what are the causes, how do we manage them, okay, and what are the complications. Okay, so now let's talk about the relevant anatomy. Now, as you can see in this diagram, facial nerve. Okay, uh, let me tell me first. The facial nerve is a mixed nerve. Okay, mixed nerve. That means it has both motor and sensory component. Okay. Now the motor fibers originate from the seven nerve nuclei in the pons, and it takes a round turn. Okay, about the six nerve nuclei. Okay, it hooks around the six nerve nuclei, and then it exits the brainstem at the ponto medullary junction okay it exits the brainstem at ponto medullary junction it enters into the internal acoustic meatus okay and at the fundus of the internal acoustic meatus it enters into the fallopian canal fallopian canal or you can also call it the facial canal okay now don't confuse the fallopian canal with fallopian tube okay fallopian canal means the facial canal okay and the nerve then transverses through the temporal bone okay in the facial canal okay facial and fallopian canal and exits the temporal bone at stylomastoid foramen stylomastoid foramen okay and then it divides into its terminal branches and supplies the facial muscles. Okay, so this is the course of the uh, facial nerve. I have tried to make it very simplified because you don't want to go into details of anatomy. Now, as I said, the facial nerve runs from pons to parotid. Okay, now it has three parts. Okay, first one is the intratemporal part. Okay, there are that is the from origin to the entry into the in, internal causing meatus. Okay, it is the intracranial part. We won't be talking much about this part. Okay, and then we have the intratemporal part, which is the part that we are interested in. That is from internal causing meatus till it exits stylomastoid foramen. Okay, and after that we have the extracranial part. Okay, that is from uh, stylomastoid foramen to the structures supplied by it okay the terminal branches so as i said the facial nerve is a mixed nerve and is mainly motor okay so motor fibers are more prominent and the sensory component of the fa facial nerve is known as nerve of Prisberg or nervous intermediates okay so what are the divisions of in, in intratemporal part of the facial nerve so first one we have the meatal segment the meatal segment means the part of the facial nerve that is present in the internal acoustic meatus, it is about 15 millimeter long. Okay, then it enters into the lab, uh, inner ear. There is a labyrinthine segment. Okay, labyrinthine segment, the part of the facial nerve in the inner ear, it is the narrowest part of the fallopian canal, and hence it is more susceptible to compression and ischemia. Okay, and that may lead to palsy. So is the narrowest part of fallopian canal it is about as a narrowest diameter of about uh, 0 0.61 millimeter the okay, narrowest, di narrowest diameter of the fallopian canal and so the nerve is more susceptible to compression okay then the nerve enters into the middle ear from the medial wall okay it takes a posterior turn which is known as the first genio of facial nerve as you can see in this diagram okay so after the facial nerve exits the internal costume meters it is the this is the labyrinthine segment okay in the inner ear okay this is the medial wall this is the medial wall of the middle ear okay so the facial nerve takes a posterior turn and is known as the genu 
okay, first genome of the uh, facial nerve, and it is the area where there is genocular ganglion. Then this segment, which is running horizontally, okay, in the middle ear, is known as the tympanic segment or the horizontal segment of the facial nerve. Okay, so as you can see in this diagram, what are the landmarks for tympanic or the horizontal segment of facial nerve? First, we have the lateral semicircular canal, okay, which lies above the facial nerve. Then, oval window lies below the facial nerve. We have the processes cochlear formis, okay, also, okay. You see landmarks of tympanic or the horizontal segment of facial nerve, okay. As I discussed, what are the landmarks? Process of cochlear formis, oval window, lateral semicircular canal, okay. Then the facial nerve then takes a turn, okay, and it is the second genome here, and then we get the mid uh, mastoid segment or the vertical segment, okay. So basically, the fellow brain canal runs in the posterior wall of the mast, uh, middle ear. It is the posterior wall. It is entire is the posterior wall, so it runs in the posterior wall of the middle ear, okay. So this is the vertical segment. Of the facial nerve. So, vertical segment of the facial nerve runs from the pyramid to the stylomastoid foramen. So, entirety of this is the vertical segment. Okay. So, as you can see, we have the vertical segment here, and from here we get to see the cauda tympani. Okay. Cauda branch of facial nerve. Okay. You can see in relation to that we have the pyramid. Uh, we have the fossa incubus for the short process of the incus. Okay, we have the editor also. Now, as I told you, it takes a turn, which is the second genome of the facial nerve, which is between tympanic and the mastoid segment here. Okay, second genome. Okay, now. Let's talk about the fish, uh, branch of the facial nerves. Okay, now the first first branch of facial nerve is the greater superficial petrosal nerve. Greater superficial petrosal nerve. It arises from the genocular ganglion, yeah, genocular ganglion, at the level of first genome. Okay, and it carries the secretomotor fibers to lacrim uh, lacrimation. Okay, that is the lacrimal glands. Okay, nasal secretions and a bit of palatine secretion as well. Okay, so if I show you in this diagram, okay, if you say this is the medial wall like this, with the posterior wall like this, again, okay, they will match to it here. So, as you can see, we have the genital ganglion here and it gives the greater petrosal nerve. Okay, we can give to the eye, okay, the nose, and palatine as well. Okay. Then, what is the second branch? Okay. Oh, so if the nerve is damaged, okay, at this level, there won't be any lacrimation and it will lead to dry eye. Okay. So it can be tested by Schumer's test, which is a topo diagnostic test that we will talk in a minute. Okay. Then in the middle ear at the level of second gene, okay. At second genome, the level of second genome, we have the nerve of nerve to stapedius muscle. Okay, nerve to stapedius muscle at the level of second genome, we have the nerve to stapedius muscle. So it normally supplies the stapedius muscle and it helps in stapedial reflex. Okay, so it protects the ear from loud sounds. So if there is injury to this nerve, okay, there is absence of stapedial reflex and it leads to uh, hyperacusis. That is normal sounds will also appear to be loud okay because normally when there was stapedial reflex the ear was protected okay and the uh, stapedius muscle uh, used to uh, decrease the intensity of sound but since now there is no uh, stapedial reflex okay even the normal sound appears to be loud that is known as hyperacusis okay then we have the Cauda tympani at the level just above this stylomastoid foramen, okay, cauda tympani. It supplies the anterior two-third of the 
anterior two third of the tongue and the sublingual and submandibular salivary glands okay salivary glands so okay just above the shallow mastoid foramen we have the collar tympani okay which enters the middle ear through the posterior wall and exits the middle ear through anterior wall at the petro tympanic fissures okay supplies the anterior two-third of the tongue for taste okay and salivation from this sub sublingual and submandibular glands okay of saliva so if there is any injury to this uh, nerve then we can say there will be no taste and uh, from the anterior uh, two-third of the tongue and there will be lack of salivation from sublingual and submandibular glands okay there's also um, a sensory branch okay of posterior auricular nerve that arises from the uh, salomastoid just above this uh, just above the salomastoid foramen and it is involved in the Hitzelberg's sign Hitzelberger sign okay in the acoustic neuroma uh, which we'll talk in acoustic neuroma okay in a different uh, video so you just you just remember that there is also a branch okay there is a sensory branch of posterior auricular nerve okay and is involved in the Hitzelberger sign now let's talk about the topo, uh, topo diagnostic test and the prognostic test okay so topo diagnostic test as the name suggests uh, these are the tests done to locate the site of lesion okay to locate the site of the lesion okay in paralysis of the lower motor neuron uh, facial basis okay so first one we have the uh, shimmers test okay that we do in the dry eye so what you do we take a, st a strip of paper strip of filter paper and it's hooked at the lower phonics okay suppose like this these are eyes okay you take the uh, strip of filter paper and you hook it at the lower phonics of each eye okay like lower phonics of each eyes okay then you compare the amount of wetting of the strip okay of both the eyes so obviously which the eye which is affected will be dry so there will be less wetting and it's known as shimmer's test okay so why do we say it is a topo diagnostic test okay now imagine if you get a patient who has dry eyes and there is positive uh, now we compare the shimmer's test okay and you see there's dry eye which means that there is involvement of injury to the greater petrosal nerve okay there is the at the level of first genu okay so nerve is injured here at the level of first genu okay which means that there will also be symptoms of hyperacusis that is to due to injury of the nerve oxypedius okay and there also be uh, loss of the taste at the uh, anterior two-third and also loss of salivation okay due to defect in the chorea tympani okay so we know by uh, just by uh, doing the shimmers test and we are uh, finding the clinical finding of tri eye that the injury is at the level of first genu or above okay Similarly, we can do the stepidal reflex, okay, where we can find finding of hyperacusis, okay, so we know that the injury is at the level of second genu or above, okay, that's why we have the involvement of nerve severities and we get to see hyperacusis, okay, and we can also do taste test, okay, and submandibular salivary flow test, okay, which tests the function of corda tympani, so if there is decreased test uh, decrease taste sensations or decrease salivary flow rate we can say that the coda tympani is involved and we can say that the injury is at the level just above the styloid stylomastoid foramen okay or above so from uh, such uh, topo diagnostic test we can say where the uh, lesion is present okay so now let's uh, talk about the prognostic test a prognostic test uh, gets, uh, tells you about the uh, probability the patient will recover. Okay, what is the prognostic value of the patient? So, basically, we do electrophysiological tests. Okay, so we can do either electro -neuro neuronography or electromyography. Okay, now electro neuronography. In electro neuronography, after the nerve injured, we wait for about three days. Okay, 
because uh, till three days there is valid and degeneration okay so it is very hard to assess till uh, three days so after three days the two sides of facial nerves are compared and uh, to identify the degree of dysfunction in injured nerves okay and then we can say whether there is good prognosis bad prognosis so electroneuronography is most useful between 4 to 21 days okay of the onset of complete paralysis okay so it is most useful between 4 to 21 days it is an mcq question okay mind it then um, let's talk about electromyogra uh, electromyography which is very similar to electroneuronography okay here you will get to see the uh, potentials on the graph okay so if there is a fibrillation potential okay on electromyography it suggests bad prognosis that is if there is fi uh, fibrillation potential is better than electrical silence okay that is uh, there is intact motor end plate but the prognosis is very bad so with that, uh, there is a need for nerve substitution okay nerve grafting and all okay so fibrillation potential suggests bad prognosis now if you get an action potential it suggests good prognosis okay the motor end plate is intact and there is no need for reanimation procedures okay no need now if there is electrical silence okay the, uh, the graph is flat it suggests that there is atrophy of the motor end plate okay and you need to substitute the muscle okay muscle rather than the nerve Okay, so we need to go for muscle transfer procedure rather than nerve substitution. Okay, so hope you have understood the relevant anatomies, uh, anatomy of the facial nerve and the topodiagnostic test and prognostic test. Okay, now we will talk about the facial nerve disorders in the next video.